Ron, Ron was a, uh, I think he's a U.S. Ranger, and uh, he ran us through uh, a few day boot camp with uh, Katie and uh, Candace. Yeah, Candace Aaron. was there, AJ, Grace. AJ, right. And uh, it was fun, and he gave us a real sense of, I mean, in two days as much as you could, but it was no joke. It was, it was, it was for real. It was yeah. quite intense. And uh, do you want to ask James Cass what he was doing while we were in boot camp? <laughs> James was recovering for the weekend with me. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then you have to ask Trisha what she was doing in boot camp. We were invited for dinner by the producers. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, these guys apparently like, are in mud and whatever, doing the training. We, we were being wined and dined. <laughs> yeah, we were got taken out for a lovely dinner. Uh, I never heard that I actually story. didn't know that. I thought they were just making out on set. <laughs> Your, your question is, the question is, in the sense of the military thing, and I'm, I'm sure you know, but Ron was, I think it's fair to say, Ron was in the Navy, yeah. uh, and the battle, the battle star, is loads of his experiences from being on a ship, all of that stuff is, that's where it's informed, that's why it feels so real as well, because of, uh, because of Ron writing the thing and having been in the Navy and knowing so much about the protocol and what it's like on a ship, I think he then transferred that to the battle star. Mm -hmm. And it seemed that it was either just more fun or more challenging because of the physical aspect of the physical. I think we can all agree that the boxing episode was a blast. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Jamie and I had fun, Eddie had fun. I mean, Starbuck, there was a bunch of us who had to do that. that was, physically, that was, that was one of my favorites. I think for me, uh, Starbuck and Cat and Six's fight um, over the air of Apollo was pretty fun to do in physical. Yeah. We were pretty bruised up afterwards. It took an entire day, I think, day and a half to film that. That was a lot of fun. And then you became besties. And then we became besties by beating each other up, yeah. <laughs> I, I think, get... um, uh, do you guys, are you familiar with the game of Pyramid? Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you guys know how to play it? No. Neither do I. <laughs> nor Katie, nor anybody on that show ever. Um, so every time we, you know, had to set up a pyramid, and it was usually just a passing shot, Reimer or whoever was directing was like, great, just, you know, get together and shoot around and we'll, we'll just, you know, we'll move the camera. And we're like, shoot around what? <laughs> There's no, there was no game, there was no rules. If you're shooting a basketball scene, you give four, you know, people a basketball and a hoop, you know, they can make a game out of it or throw a football around. But this little thing with a, with a garbage can stuck to a piece of plywood, it was, um, it had no rules. So Katie and I made up most of that stuff just to make it look sexy. <laughs> I remember when you took that hit from Tommy Europe. Oh, buddy. Over and over. Tommy Europe was one of the uh, background actors, and Tommy's a, he's a really accomplished uh, stunt performer in, in Vancouver. And he's, he's a beast. He's an extra professional uh, football player. He played in the CFL. And uh, yeah, there's a tape where you see Truco getting hit. It's great. We, sh we shot that scene on a Thursday. He knocked me into Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> he, if you see it, that's a real hit. It's a real hit if you see the scene. <laughs> and I got up, I go, oh, we got it. That's good. I've freeze framed it a couple times and pause right after Trigo gets hit. Just looking very confident. <laughs> confident. And there's this look of shock. There's this ribs fold. It is, uh, it's it's the kind of, if you watch it in slow mo, it's the kind of hit that is so hard my head was still in the same place. But my head physically started to laugh. It's, it's really funny. Never again. I have a question for Rebecca and for Michael. Uh, when your characters were first introduced, you were just ordinary humans. I'm curious, at what point did you learn you turn out to be Cylons, and how was that revealed? <laughs> Spoiler! <laughs> So I first found out Eddie was uh, was teasing me in the in the hair and makeup trailer one day. Have you read it? <laughs> he goes, oh, 
just you wait. Pull up your, pull up your socks, girl. Pull up your socks. Go to the office. Get a copy. Go home and read it. screamed like a little girl. Uh, but no, none of us knew. None of us knew for sure what it meant. They wouldn't, they wouldn't give away anything until the scene that we shot uh, of us meeting in the gym and actually discovering it. They told us on the way over to shoot that scene. What did they say to you? Yeah, I learned everything from Aaron Douglas. <laughs> I never asked that before, and I just, that's how I found out. But we, we went to I, I, I hope not everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything I ever did was informed by Aaron Douglas. You no, know, it was. Yeah, we didn't know what we were doing. When we, well, I just know that previous to that scene, you and I had a makeout scene. Yes. When we started hearing the music. It was very hot. And that's, I only read that far, and then the rest of the story. <laughs> but what scene's coming up next doesn't matter. No, it's just, just like Ray said, we didn't know. We didn't know until the very last second. That was part of the, the, the fun of the show, is the secrecy. Um, and, and the confusion that we shot that scene where we all revealed, and, and Hogan walks in, and Aaron walks in, and you walk in, and I walk in, we're like, oh, fuck. It was, it was really um, that, that confusion that you see in that scene, and that was happened on the day, because I think we had just gotten those pages, and we just realized it. And we, we had rumors, and we knew where, where this story was going, but we hadn't seen it officially until it was on page, and we shot that scene. Yeah. Great scene, but it was fun. Thanks. And, and the camera work on that scene was monumental. We all clapped at the end of that day. Yeah. It was fun. My question is, uh, Michael Hogan, are, is any, are any of you in contact with them, and how's this recovery coming? Yeah, Great we're all in contact with him, and we've been helping him, and those of you who don't know, he had a, a stroke, and it was a very, very difficult time for him, and he's still in the hospital, and uh, it's been over a year, and uh, we, yesterday, and we'll do it again today, we'll shout out to him before we all leave, nice. and, uh, but it's been very, very difficult for everyone, and uh, we're hoping we can get him here next year. We're So yeah, we're in contact with him. We all are, and, and, and believe me, and a lot of you have helped in uh, bringing awareness and uh, helping him through this period of time. It's really, really difficult for them. It was a shot, man, that just took everybody by surprise, yeah. and it hit him hard. He was hit very hard, and um, but you know he'll come back. He's the XO. He knows what he's got to do. You know, I don't give him a break, so you know. I, kind of, I laugh at him a lot. Because <laughs> he's always laughing at me anyway, so it's all good. Thank you for asking. That's a great question. Thank you for having us. James Hi, I have a question for James. He would continuously make, I guess, not the best decisions. <laughs> You think? Mark's is not the best, that's a very good understatement. Um, he continues to make bad decisions, and at the same time, uh, you still want to root for him as a character, even though he keeps doing the wrong thing. He yes. keeps doing the wrong thing. And so, I have a question about, um, I don't know if this is like a combination of writing, or just like really good acting skill, but I want to know your thoughts on that, and how... Uh, Honestly, it's, it's, uh, I'd say 90% is the writing. It's it's all there for you. Also, you're supported by all the other the other actors. When you're when you're doing something, you're not acting in isolation. You're acting with people. So it's the, it, it's everybody is involved in that thing. Uh, making bad decisions. This is one of the things about him. Essentially, is that. Uh, he had a conscience. I was saying this to somebody today. It, 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 it was like drilling for oil to find his conscience. <laughs> but he did have one. And that made him a bit more human. I don't, like, uh... And there was a decision I had made early on where 
I'm with people like Tama and Jamie, and they wanted to cut my hair originally. I was like, you know, just, just push through, like, you're going to boot camp? And I was like, no, I want to go out for dinner with Tricia. <laughs> And so, essentially, I'm not on the Battle Star, and I didn't know the Battle Star. And so, I, that was part of the thing about looking a bit hapless. And I also hadn't seen that before. Like, everybody, there's all these heroes walking around, they know what to do, they're direct, they're definite, they look you in the eye, their word is their bond, and then there's some guy who shouldn't be there. I'm the right pledge dancer, sorry. That was, uh, so, that, to make him... Otherwise, he'd have been a total monster. I mean, I, in the sense of the well, is is that apart from Thanos, is there anybody who's killed more people in, in, uh, in, in the sense of uh, you know uh, not real? Uh, but that's, that's, that's a lot of stuff on somebody's mind, right? The honest truth is, for me, I grew up watching Battlestar, so it was like a subliminal infancy image of, of TV. And my first ever time I came to the United States, um, I lived in, I, I was in Paris as a kid, and we traveled with my dad, who's, who's American, uh, as am I. Um, but we went to Connecticut to a place called Old Lyme uh, for the summer. It was obscenely hot. I remember my dad leaving us in a car outside his office in New York for an hour in August, and we were like the panting dog that dies in the TV commercials. Um, that was my image of America, is like, Coke is the solution. Um, <laughs> ask James Callis. Um, and, uh, Long story short, uh, the, the, the TV was one of those proper TVs with a tuner that you had to tune in. And the first image I ever saw on television in America, I've never saw this before, actually, was Battlestar Galactica. Um, and so that's the image it has for me. It's not a conscious one, it's like a subliminal thing. And when I first turned over the first page of the script, it, it, it was like sort of reverting to some child child's stage, and yet I couldn't recognize in this story what the image was for me. I was looking for a guy called Apollo, and there wasn't one in the script. It was, it was Lee and Kara, and, and so gradually this sort of mature image came into focus of a different story, and obviously that's Ron's genius, is that he, he wore it with pride, but lightly. And, um, and, and so the, the two have come into focus over the years, and obviously Richard Hatcher, God rest his soul, emblemizes that uh, completely. And the day that he walked onto our show was kind of, for me, traumatic in that way, where you get all of this coming into perspective in a, in a sort of scary way. And then you, you meet Richard and you, you allay your fears like you do in therapy. And um, I, I'm told. <laughs> um, so, yeah. He, he represents exactly what your question is about. Richard Hatch, an amazing human being, who killed the world with warmth and kindness and enthusiasm, and he loved this event more than any other. He did. Um, and we are his children. Every year, you can have a Every year. Uh, Battlestar had a lot of really memorable characters. Um, I wanted to ask the entire cast, who is your favorite Battlestar Galactica character, and why was it crashed down? <laughs> Sam and I sat, sat together. Answer the I'm question! Not, and I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. And I'm like, you have to come do a panel with us, buddy. I just want to say, I, I started the show as a fan. I saw the miniseries. And I called my agent and I said, you have to get me on 
Battlestar Galactica. And she goes, you know that was canceled like 20 years ago, right? <laughs> Let me explain. They did this remake. It is brilliant. Uh, I want to do a guest star in Battlestar Galactica. And I had no resume to speak of. None. And there was no reason to believe this was going to work. And then it worked. So I got to arrive on this set with all of these brilliant people as a fan, right? So everyone's being all nice to me. Oh, great. You know, you're a colleague. I'm like, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. And Aaron Douglas is taking me out, and I'm like, I'm out with the chief, but I shouldn't call him that, because he'll think that's not cool. Um, so, so basically, <laughs> this, this whole thing, you know, like even watching the panel, I, I'm still a fan, and, and I am, I'm in awe of these people around me, so I'm just so pleased to be here. It's really split apart here. Yes, sir. We wanted to say hi to Michael. Oh. And then we're going to do it in style. <laughs> Testing one, two. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> XO, we're all here. We're waiting for you. We're going to do this again next year. You're going to be with us, all right? So say we all, and we all say thank you to you for all the love and friendship. Thank you.